What is going on guys? Quad MFT here, your new favorite YouTuber, bringing you a dual commentary with my dad. Hello, son. Hello, father. So what do we got going on here today? Uh, just a really old gameplay that I actually had saved up on my HD PVR and my, uh, my hard drive. So it's really long. It's like 10 minutes, 50 something seconds. And I'm not sure how well I do. As you can tell, I'm using the troll guns, which are the FMG9. Um, I've changed my ways. I don't even know what level I am. I'm probably a pretty low level. And assassin. So, you know, I, I don't use that anymore. I use uh, a pistol instead because I prefer the pistol. I feel like I can snap uh, snap on someone really fast and it pulls out really fast, especially with Sleight of Hand Pro because if you guys do not know, the Pro version of Sleight of Hand makes you pull out guns faster. I'm using the MP7 rocking uh, suppressor and uh, rapid fire. Probably my favorite gun in the game. Well, I know you get more kills in this game than I get in like five games, so... <laughs> Um, you tear it up here. Yeah, well, sort of. It's, I mean, it's not the best kill-to-death ratio. It's like a 7.1. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not Mine's sure. always starts, my kill-to-death ratio always starts with something that says point. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a little bit different than yours. But I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn to be patient. I'm trying to learn to just patrol an area, not to just rush to be or rush to whatever. So, uh, although I have to say that I have to give props to... Uh, MW3, they did change the spawns, at least in uh, Domination, so I feel like it's a little bit easier to uh, approach my enemies. Still, still not good at my aim down sight, but hey, I was thinking we could talk a little bit about our uh, trip earlier this year when we went to uh, Brazil, because it, uh, it's been sticking in my head, man. It's a different country, it's a different world. What do you think? It was a very, very new experience. I actually killed myself with the critter right there for... Uh for you guys because uh, I, I needed I just wanted to do that just to show how pro I am yeah does that count as uh, like a part of your double kill or was that like a triple uh, that, was, that was a double oh, okay. it does. well Didn't count you if I count me then yeah, I got a triple, triple. I got a triple kill guys okay no I gotta say when we went to Brazil I was expecting my son to be like wow this is amazing it's a different country different money different language all these different things I hope he finds there's some real value and he knows that America is really a wonderful place and other countries really aren't quite as special as America but on our plane ride over I realized the most valuable thing that uh, he loved and that was the fact that we got dish on-demand satellite while we were traveling <laughs> That yeah, I mean, was awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, first plane. of all, okay, yeah, okay. Every once in a while, there's a strong wind in my house, and my dish, you know, obviously gets moved by the wind, and uh, we lose a little bit of reception. How is it that we can travel, what is it, like 500 miles an hour, and yeah, they don't lose reception right. at all? I mean, come on. I was. I have to admit, I was kind of impressed, too. Paid the extra, whatever it was, 7.99 or whatever, and we watched it the whole way to Brazil. That's when we want to sleep, actually. So, um, so, yeah, so we arrived there, and uh, you... Did you know the first thing you notice is the fact that they obviously don't speak English? Uh, mm -hmm. Pop quiz. <laughs> Who, what do they speak? Uh, they speak Brazilian. Yes, Brazilian, no, or fine. commonly known as Portuguese, Portuguese, <laughs> yes. which I know a little bit of Spanish, so I was able to get around. But we really had interpreters there that helped us a long time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it, so yeah, it was pretty. It was, it was kind of cool. I mean, it was different, definitely. Different. It was definitely different. Um, you know, obviously the time zones are all different and everything, but you know, we arrived there. Extremely humid, like humid like no other. Yeah, yeah, like like you walk outside and I wear glasses and, uh, and the glasses would steam up. And it was really, it was a lot different than uh, the West Coast. So, uh, but but the other thing we realized is that it's it is different. We, we some guys was giving us a tour around, and uh, he told us about when um, basically he he pulled up to a stoplight. And uh, guys pulled him out of his car, and uh, they grabbed him. They, they took him hostage. And you'd think his wife would, you know, be able to just call the police and, and get help, but they really didn't care. And so um, that's what apparently what they do in Brazil. Yeah. So let's explain the police. It's completely different from how we have how we have police here. They they're on, most of the time. I'm pretty sure they're on our side. You guys may not feel like that sometimes, but they're right, on our side compared to Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> They're totally in Brazil, it. here's the story. Let me break it down for you. The police are just another public enemy. They are out there to to steal your money. They're out you, there to take you and kill you or something like that. Yeah, there's no one watching the police. Yeah, the, the police the, the police are just paid assassins. 
Yeah, I mean, basically what happened was the guy got the guy got kidnapped. He um, they tried to ransom his, his family for money, see whatever money they could have. So they tried to contact him. They didn't have a lot of money, so couldn't really get much from him. In the middle of the night, while he was he was he was in a favela, which is a slum. Yeah. Like um, you guys know the map on a favela in Modern Warfare Two, kind of looks like that. It does kind of look like that. Only that those buildings are much more sophisticated. They're not as as uh, primitive, let's say. But anyway, he was in one of those places. At, in the middle of the night, he escaped. And the way he escaped is he jumped out. And they don't have uh, you know, gutters and things like we have. They, their sewers actually are open. So he jumped out into the sewage, which is, if you don't know what sewage is, ask your mom, mom and dad. Um, he was in the sewage, and he was hanging out for several hours, and finally found an opportunity to come up out of the goo. And uh, when he did, he ran to the police station. And he said, hey, I, these guys, they, they just kidnapped me. They, you know, they're obviously bad gangster types. I can take him to you and you can arrest him. And the police said, well, how much money you got? I said, well, I don't have money. He said, well, you just go home. So the police did not care. They, they, they offered to, if, they, if he would have given them enough money, they would, have want, they would have gone out and just killed him. Yeah, they said, we'll go we'll kill him if you want. Which is like, what? I mean, what, this is one of the police, I mean, sometimes maybe our police feel like they want to, or we would want them to. But our police don't really, at least traditionally, work like that. So that was really an amazing story, and it made you realize that um, we talked to some other people that brought their kids there, yeah. and they said, if something bad happens, don't go to the police. Come to us, and we'll figure it out. Whereas usually when, when I'm raising my kids, I'm like, hey, if something happens, go to a guy in a uniform with a gun and, and a badge, and he'll make sure that things happen right for you. What, what if the guy in the uniform is like an Al-Qaeda? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's kind of what it was. Is the gangs <laughs> have their own, their own rules. And the police have their own rules, and they kind of equally ignore each other or decide who's going to rule the rule the world. Um, so you can't really trust the police to go, all right, well, we're going to do it right, or at least when people are looking, we're going to do it right. So, yeah, that was that was the first thing. So we were always very cautious. Yeah, tell them about the time where we uh, were in the favela and how the, they like missionaries. and uh, Yeah, we were fortunate. And, and uh, so they liked us. We were in the ghetto of the ghetto of the ghetto. Of the ghetto. Of the ghetto. Of the ghetto at night. And uh, normally, you, you don't go to the favelas. As a matter of fact, I've heard something recently where they're like, yeah, that's fine, go to Brazil, but don't go to the favelas. Well, we spent almost all our time in the favelas because we were hosted by some missionaries who we were kind of learning what they do and talking to them and, and stuff like that. And uh, so we went to the favelas, and we wore our little uh, T-shirt that said we were with the mission, and we hung out with the missionary people. And yeah, we talked and it's to them. also considered to be uh, the third most dangerous place in the world where we were. Yeah, the favelas. Yeah, <laughs> and and one of the uh, top one, if not two, top two uh, areas of poverty. Um, but anyway, so um, you know we were we were hanging out there, and at one point in the night, we were walking around the streets, and they're like, "Don't you know, like put away the camera, don't don't take pictures, don't take video, um, because right those guys right there, four feet away from you, they're doing." They're, they're uh, selling drugs, and if you take a picture of them, they're part of the gang, and they're going to take So I'm like, okay, we'll keep the cameras away. Yeah, there was like and, four of them. Yeah, so I mean, there's teenage guys doing doing business, but that's, but man, they they're part, they're hooked up, man, they're connected. They would they would have killed us if we were taking pictures. It's, it's YouTube. I don't know. I'm sure people could put stuff on YouTube somehow. Um, anyway, so the other thing they like to do is when we first got there, um, at the first night. They took us downtown, and there, downtown there's prostitution, and it's actually sponsored by the police, which is annoying because I guess legal there if the police sponsor it. But anyway, um, they took us to a to part of the town where there was these beautiful women. We drove by them, and they were standing on the side of the street. I mean, just I mean, I gotta say, I'm a married man, and we didn't partake partake in any of the uh, wares that these beautiful ladies were selling. But they had some killer bodies, and. Uh, they would they would stare you down and we were three feet away from them, driving by just looking at them checking them out and they're we checking were in us like out. a huge tour bus yeah well a huge uh, probably eight, ten twelve seats in that van but anyway um, so they're looking at us we're looking at them and we're, we're, you know just the 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 people who were driving us there are like check them out they're pretty pretty and we're like yeah they're they're beautiful um, and then the next thing they tell us is that they're not women they're men so there were these transvestites <laughs> that. Uh, you know they had they were nice up top, but down below they had their twig and berries, and, and if you were going to participate in some activities with the ladies. You would find out that they were not ladies. Yeah. So that was that was a, a startling. People would have 
uh, decided to buy the, uh, what they were selling, they would have been sorely surprised. So yeah, it was, it, when we went, it was, it, what's that movie that came out right after that that, that was, that was like in, set in Brazil? Oh, it's called Fast Five. Yeah, yes, yeah. So that was kind of cool to see after we'd been there. Ooh, right. Yep, second one this game. Does it take three to shoot those down? Two to shoot them. Two, that's AC-130. That's what I use now. AC-130, yeah. Yeah, because I'm always shooting them down. <laughs> I can't resist, man. I, I can't shoot people, so I just shoot the airplanes. You walking uh, sand turret? That's me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so the other thing we noticed is that we really, really poor there. Man, some some people, they live in just, like, they had a two-by-four over their head and, you know, metal sheet, great metal you know, just as their roof and didn't have running water and they peed in the, you know, outside. And yeah, it was, it was, it was quite a bummer. But hey, um, looks like that's about it. So thanks for watching, guys. Always pulling out the victory. Like if you enjoyed it and always remember to uh, subscribe for more of these dual commentaries and normal commentaries by myself. Later, guys. We are out of here.